Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, samples and negotiating with China. So my first rule of thumb, and I know there's people that give you different advice on this, but if you don't do it, I think you're stupid, in my own opinion. Uh, maybe if you're buying fidget spinners or something silly, it doesn't matter. But for me, I want a sample of everything. I want to see, I want to see it, touch it, feel it. I want to see how the quality is. I want to inspect the packaging. I want to know what I can expect when I order that product. So I always, always, always order a sample. So once I've identified a product, I've contacted maybe 10 manufacturers, uh, and they've given me pricing or a general pricing guide, you'll find that those prices shouldn't vary greatly if the materials are the same. Where you have to be careful, especially when you start negotiating, is they'll use inferior materials, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So anyways, once I have you know narrowed down to a few, maybe half a dozen manufacturers that have a price in the same realm. Now, if, you're, if your item is $5, Generally, I would say if somebody's at six and a half dollars and somebody's at four dollars, you should get a sample of each one of those price points just so you can see if there's any real difference. So, what are they going to charge you for a sample? So, a sample they usually give you the sample free, but they're going to charge you for shipping. So, it's going to come DHL Air or whatever from China. It's going to cost you probably, depending on the item, 60 to 100 bucks. So, you know, two things you, you could consolidate that in China like have a freight forwarder over there, collect all your items and send them over in one box. If you're not in any hurry, that might be worth it. If you're serious about your business, what is $60? It's not that big a deal. The only thing I usually do is if I'm paying, it's, it's almost like a flat rate, like you're gonna pay 60 bucks whether you have something this big or something this big. So what I usually do is I'll ask for a bunch of samples. So like if I'm, even if they charge me five bucks a sample, if I'm paying 60 bucks for shipping anyways, fill the bag, you know, that's usually a cheap price anyhow. Um, so that's what I do, and that also lets you check kind of, you know, are they all the same, is there inconsistencies, uh, so on and so forth. So that's the first thing is I always get a sample. So now once you have the sample and you're happy with it, and you're going to start negotiating with your supplier, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, you want them to be able to make money. In most cases, you're dealing with a trader, with a middleman. You want them to be able to make money, right? If they go out of business, you go out of business. And you also have to remember your initial order is going to be small, your next order is going to be big. <clears throat> hopefully if it works the likelihood of them changing the price on you is huge so if you are reasonable up front then you might have a good shot at saying hey listen I didn't beat you up up front or you could even negotiate that in the beginning and saying hey listen I want to lock in a price so I'm willing to live with your price of X but I want that on my next five orders now they may say hey material prices change taxes change exchange rates so on and so forth so be prepared for that. But I guess what I'm getting at is if you treat them right in the beginning, the likelihood of them treating you right down the road is pretty good. Well, I have a lot of times somebody will try and like really negotiate hard. And then when you go to reorder, they know that you've already launched their product, right? The, the Chinese are getting smart. They know, they follow Amazon. They know what your logo is. They can go on Amazon, see generally how many you sold. They have viral launch, they have Jungle Scout, all that stuff. So they're gonna know that they have you and then they're going to say, oh, sorry, the price went up. So by negotiating too hard in the beginning, you can screw yourself in the end. So my advice would be make a fair deal. If, you're, if your item, if your margins are right, 5 or 10% is not that big of a deal in the scheme of things, right? So like a lot of my products I buy, I sell for 7 or 8 times what I pay for them. So if I pay a dollar, I sell it for $8. If I paid a dollar ten and sold it for $8, that really doesn't make that big of a deal. But to, the, to them it does, that's a 10% that I don't have to beat them up over. So my advice, if you don't need it, I mean there, there's a reality too that says, hey listen, I gotta be able to make money, if I can't make money, I can't do it. Um, so I, I wouldn't be shy about saying, hey, my price tolerance isn't there. But if you get a fair price, I think fair is the operative word that everybody's looking for, if you get a fair price, just go with it. Don't feel obligated to beat them up and try and squeeze absolutely every nickel um, out of the deal. So that's it. There's a little bit about negotiating. Hope that helps you. If you have any specific questions, put them in the comments below. I've had great luck. I haven't had any real issues. Um, the only issue I've had revolves around shipping, which I'm going to talk about in the next video. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.